One of the biggest perks of Darren is that it's easily extendable and adding detectors should be pretty easy. So let's do a walkthrough of building your first detector on a Darren. The idea behind a Darren and the way that it works is similar to like a web crawler or a web scraper. Imagine you want to scrape Twitter for a bunch of URLs or a bunch of Twitter profiles. In a bit of an oversimplified way, a Darren is the same thing. It's just a scraper or a crawler. Given a smart contract, it'll take its AST or its abstract syntax tree and look for the contents in it for the different bugs that we're looking for. For example, looking at the smart contract right here, real simple counter smart contract, we take the smart contract and we build it with forge build dash dash AST. We can go to the out folder in this, go to counter.json, format this, and we'll actually see if we scroll all the way up here, we'll minimize ABI, bytecode, deploy bytecode, all this metadata. We'll get this thing called AST, which stands for this abstract syntax tree. This is the structured representation of the code primarily used by the compilers to generate the target binaries. It's stored as a JSON file and you can get the whole AST right here. And this is what we're going to use to actually build and run our detectors. So let's think about some of the different things that we might want a detector to check for. Well, an easy layup is no floating pragma versions, right? In Solidity, doing this little caret thing for deployed code isn't good, isn't a best practice. We want to always deploy our smart contracts with exactly the specific version of Solidity every single time. So we can 100% write a little script that just crawls through our smart contract looking for these Solidity versions, or we could just grab it right out of this JSON file instead of writing this crawler. So we just command F for pragma. We'll find this node type pragma directive inside of this source unit, which has literals Solidity caret 0.8.13. So instead of just crawling through this ourselves, looking for this 0.8.13, because maybe it's over here, maybe they did weird spacing, who knows? We can just grab it right out of the JSON, much easier and in a much more structured manner. Okay, cool, so that's an easy layup. Okay, well, what's another easy layup? So cool, well, that's nice. I mean, we could easily kind of see that looking at this right away. Well, let's go one level deeper. Let's go into the counter contract definition itself. What's an easy layup in here that a tool could very easily find? Well all these public function declarations should probably be external. If a function isn't used inside the contract, it should be external instead of public because it's going to be cheaper gas wise. So the same thing, we can find all the function definitions in our counter.json. We can look up set number and we see, if I scroll up a little bit, we have this node type contract definition with these different nodes. Some of them are going to be different variables. For example, our name variable in our counter.json is this public storage type. But if we look for just set number, this is also in this node section. However, this is going to be a function, right? It's got a function selector. It's got some different parameters, return parameters, different state mutability. Is it virtual? Is it visible, etc. And we can easily check, hey, is this function used anywhere else inside this contract using this AST? No? Okay, well then great. This should be external instead of public and we can script a Darren to find all of these checks. You can poke around this AST and find a lot of what you're gonna need to write different detectors for bots. Again, why? Because this is what's used by the compiler itself. This is all the information, so it's probably all the information that you're gonna need, or at least the starting point. So let's actually get into a quick start of writing a detector for a Darren. To actually begin contributing to a Darren, you wanna to come to the contributing.md file where you can read exactly how to get set up and start making PRs and et cetera. But basically the gist of it is first thing you want to clone the actual repository and then be inside the code slash Darren repo here. If you are using VS code, it's suggested that you add the Rust analyzer extension and the Rust syntax extension as well. These are gonna help format all the Rust code that a Darren is written in. Once you have the repo cloned, you'll have a folder that looks a lot like this and has a lot of stuff in it. Report.md is gonna be the standard report generated by a Darren on the contracts contained in the tests directory that's up here. We're gonna have this template.rs file. We're gonna have both a low and a high. We're gonna be working with the low. This is a template for writing a detector that has a low severity. We have the detect folder itself, which contains all the detectors and the detector dependencies. We have the detector.rs, which you can kind of think as the hub here. It exposes a list of the detectors to be called inside the file. And then obviously we have tests. Now that we've done a little bit of a walkthrough through the code, let's actually build our first detector. First, we're gonna to wanna to navigate to the Darren Core, SRC, detect, 
low folder and make a copy of this template.rs here. And we're going to rename ours to my first detector.rs, my first detector. In here, we have a little template of our first detector, and it contains pretty much most of what we're going to need to build our first detector. Up at the top, we of course have our imports and dependencies. And if we minimize all the sides, we can see we really only have three sections here. We have our tests at the bottom. We have our actual logic in this issue detector section, and we have our struct at the top here. Most of what we really need is going to be inside this issue detector. The detect function is going to be containing the logic to detect a given vulnerability or pattern. The severity is going to be the severity that we prescribe it for. This one is going to be low. The title of the detector, the description of the detector, ignore the instances for now. And then the name, which is a little bit different from the title. Don't worry too much about the difference for now. So let's change this from a template detector to our first detector. So let's take our pub struct template detector and let's change this to my first detector. And then down in the implementation, we'll say implementation issue detector for my first detector. And we're going to add some logic in here in a minute, but we're going to want to add this my first detector into our mod.rs, which is this file in here. And underneath whatever the bottom section here is, we're going to add pub crate mod my first detector like this. And then at the bottom of this, we're going to add pub use my first detector, colon, colon, my first detector. This should make sure that all the dependencies are available to our detector. Now this is in here, we can actually start editing our detector. And if you're using one of these linters, you'll find that some of our stuff is now breaking, obviously, because we just changed the name of some stuff. And we'll fix this in a minute, don't worry. But let's say for now that we wanted to add our first detector. Let's say we had a contract that looks something like this. We have a modifier here called high that's used in set number and all it does is emit this event high. This would be something known as a bit of a useless modifier. Why? Well, because it's only used once. So ideally, instead of having a modifier defined, we literally just do emit high here and we get rid of this modifier, right? This isn't a very good modifier since it's only used once. We want to call that out as this might be actually a waste of gas. So what we can do is actually write a detector for that useless modifier. This context variable workspace context has a lot of stuff in it from our AST that we can work with and play with. One of the objects in here is actually a list of modifiers. We can actually do a little for loop in here. And we can say for each modifier in context dot modifier definitions. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. We can say let mutable count equals zero for each invocation in each context dot modifier invocations. Oops, and I need brackets here too. So this modifier definitions returns a list of all the different modifiers and this modifier invocations returns how many times these modifiers are actually used. We can say if we let some ID equals invocation dot modifier underscore name dot referenced declaration. If ID equals equals modifier dot ID count plus equals one. So all we're doing basically is looping through all the different modifiers and counting how many times that they're actually used. And outside of this, we just go if count equals equals one, then we'll do a little capture exclamation mark, self context modifier. Otherwise, we'll call OK self dot found instances is empty. This is what you're pretty much always going to call if your detector doesn't find anything. But so great, we've written kind of a minimalist detector here already. And since I have these VS Code extensions, it's already adding in different typing and helping this be a little bit cleaner. But so we can scroll down, we can keep this as severity low, we can change the title to modifiers only invoked once our lame description. We don't need to give this one a description. Instances we'll ignore. And then the name we'll do a little bracket here, comma, issue detector name pool. Dot dot useless modifier. We already have this defined someplace else. 
Uh, so uh, we're kind of cheating. If you wanted to add a different name, you would add it to this, this list over here. So now that we have this detector, we want to actually add it to our detector.rs so that this detector is available when we run a Darren dot. So we'll open up detector.rs here and add it to the low vulnerability group. If we scroll down to the low section here, we can actually see some useless internal functions, use an internal public. There might be some different ones here, depending on when you come here. We can add my first detector in here. A little comma at the end. And it'll automatically get bumped up. And then there's going to be a function below called get all issue detectors, where if we want to scroll down, we're going to add a new line. We'll say box colon colon my first detector colon colon default to add it to this list here. Then we're going to want to find the issue detector name pool and add it in here. This we kind of already used over here, right? We, we gave our detector a name from this pool already, but we could do a new one in here and we could say my first detector little comma. And then instead back here, we could do issue detector name pool, my first detector like that. And then finally, still in the detector.rs, we're going to scroll down to this function called report issue detector by name. We're going to update this little, we're going to update this match section in here, scroll to the bottom, and we're going to add issue detector name pool, my first detector, little arrow, some box, my first detector, colon, colon, default. To make sure this all compiles and works in our my first detector folder, let's just rename this to my first detector test. And then we'll just delete this line for now, just so that we can actually run our detector. Now we can actually test out our new detector that hopefully is going to catch some of these useless modifiers here. So what we can do, oh, and it's still mad at me, so we're actually also going to comment out all of this. Yay. <laughs> this way it's not mad at me anymore. So what we're going to do now is in our test folder of a Darren, if we go to tests, we have this contract playground where if we go to SRC, we've got a ton of different contracts in here that we can run our tests on and run our detectors on. So what we can do is in our terminal to actually run our new detector, we can just run cargo run dash dash dot slash tests slash contract playground enter. This is going to compile everything. And now we're going to run our detector on this suite of different contracts in that contracts playground. Now that it's all done, we'll actually be able to pull up that report.md. And if we scroll down in our report, we'll see here for L21 modifiers only invoked once are lame. And we can scroll down to L21 down here. Modifiers only invoked once are lame, and it'll give us a whole list of all the different scenarios where this actually happened. Now, of course, any detector that you build, you're going to have to write a test for. There's going to be some documentation on how to write tests as well. But with just this, you're going to become a Rust station, get incredibly powerful at this incredibly low level, incredibly fast programming language Rust, build some really cool detectors, and help secure Web3. Looking forward to see what you build. Thanks for getting froggy with me, and we'll see you next time.